Hello, everybody. Happy Tuesday to you. Big waves to you. Listen, if I could show you my car right now, you'd see you're like, man, this guy. It's uh, I've been I heard somebody say they they've already been up. They've already exercised this morning. And um, so have I. I'm feeling it today. Um, so our word for today is stability, stability. And what I, I'm, I'm, I'm holding my iPad on my leg and it's not very stable right now. So bear with me. Okay. Uh, and it goes along with the word, but stability, a state or quality of being stable, especially resistant to change, displacement. Uh, well, steadfastness is really what I was looking for. All of those kind of define stability. But what I wanted to share with you is if you look at stability, you really dig down into it. Like for you right now, if I were to ask you, like, what do you do that stabilizes you? Like, what is it? If I, if I brought Rick Redford on, I bet he's got something that he does that creates stability in his day. Maybe it's a walk in the morning. Maybe it's getting up, listening to an audio or reading a book or drinking a cup of coffee. I don't know what it is, but I would say that you could probably identify something that stabilizes you for the day. And if you don't have that, um, so somebody said daily Bible reading in the chats. I just saw that. Absolutely. Like one of the things and one of the things I love about looking at the word stability is it reminds me, Brent, you got to stabilize yourself every day, every day to move into the day. I say getting your dome right. <laughs> I got to get my dome right. You know, I got to, I got to get, I got to get, that thing calibrated in for the day. The stability we cannot find in the world, we must create with our own persons. Uh, Nathan Brandon said that, but but I think about it. I'm like, man, if you if you spend your time like news media, all this outside stuff, like we can get very unstable. Would you agree? Like there's a lot of drama to pull from in the world, in the business life, in our profession, in our relationships. Like there's all kinds of things that we can get all stirred up and, and run up a, as I say, run up a flagpole with, right? And get really anxious. Does anybody, does anybody get anxious on this coach's corner? Like anybody got any anxiety? <laughs> anybody ever worry? Huh? No, surely not. Not, not me. Um, it's just life. So stability is something that I believe we got to keep at the core of us. And we've got to focus on stabilizing ourselves, whether it's reading, whether it's audio, whether it's getting up and exercising in the morning, whether it's sitting around with quiet time and a cup of coffee. You got to find your, your, stability and Andrea Rosser's stability to start her day and Brent Palmer's stability to start his day is possibly two different things. So you got to find yours. And I believe the world around you will appreciate you even more if you find your stability and your calibration on the day. So what happens if a person's emotionally stable, ready to conquer the day, ready to take it on. Well, during stressful situations, we're more calm. We handle it different. Um, those people that are stable people that start their day stable, find a way to stabilize their day. They don't experience negative feelings as much throughout the day. Um, also, it's really good for the self-esteem. You just, like, like when I do this, so I'm going to throw myself up under the bus. 
So if I'm in my hometown, I'm really good. Like, I feel like I'm really good at getting stabilized to start my day. Like I do this and this and this. And I'm just so like, I just, I, I feel like I'm a lot calmer. I'm a lot emotionally stable. Like, like I'm less irritable. I have less negative emotions, all that stuff. But the minute I start traveling, I, I, you know, I'm in a hotel room and I'm weak. It completely changes me. Right. And so I got, I got to really focus on wherever I'm at. It's very important because it also creates a self-esteem, a good self-esteem about yourself when you can stabilize yourself. Um, and then through difficult ordeals, you remain capable of figuring out ways to get around it, to get over it, to get under it, however you need to do it. So you're, if you're stable, you're a person that is more of a solution person. You're finding solutions to issues. Um, so, Andrea, I know we've done the word stable before and stability, but I just think it's one that ever so often we need to come back to and remind ourselves it's hard to be that stable person. So if we keep it in the front of our mind and we go, you know what, how am I right now? Am I, am I providing stability in my life like I was three months ago? Like we've got to constantly evaluate our status every few months. So I'll turn it to you, maybe every few weeks. Yeah, I might need this one every other day. So guys, let me just, and I'm a disaster right now. So just so you guys know, more so than usual for what most people will probably think is the most ridiculous, ridiculous reason. And then I sent my puppy off to puppy boot camp. And so she is off being trained and they're sending me videos and I'm looking at her tail and I'm like, that's not a happy tail. She usually has a happier tail. And like, I am not emotionally stable. So like my eyes are leaky. If any conversation you have with me, you're going to hear about Maddie and it's just where we're at right now. So I'm working through it. But when I looked at this one, I thought, oh my goodness, don't we all need emotional stability? Sometimes for more important reasons, sometimes for smaller reasons, but how do we develop it? How do we get to a place where we are emotionally stable, even in those like parts of the roller coaster where we're not sure it's staying on the rail? So how do we stay emotionally stable, even in the tough times? So first of all, look at things from a different perspective. So we all have tunnel vision, every single one of us. And when we get into a place where we're seeing a lot of negative, sometimes it can be good to take a little step back and realize that it absolutely could be worse. And if we can try to focus our perspective on things that we can still be grateful for, rather than the things that we're not loving in this moment, we can shift our perspective. And then next, we need to create a plan to get moving. So no matter how small those steps are, every single one of us, I keep saying that, but really I'm saying me. I don't know if every single one of us, I think we're all kind of the same. We all have stuff that are the same, but I think that most people will say that can get emotionally stuck. And we can get into this place where we are emotionally just paralyzed. We don't know if we take a step forward. We don't know if we take a step back. So we just freeze. But an emotionally stable person realizes that they cannot stay in that little dump for very long. So we create a micro plan. So it could be something very tiny that I'm just going to get out of bed and I'm going to move toward, you know, I'm going to make my bed first thing um, and just clean up in that moment. And that's going to step me to take the next micro step, which is to go brush my teeth, which is going to take me to go downstairs. You know, each little micro step to get yourself moving when you just feel like freezing. And now obviously it can work with the bigger steps too. Number three is express yourself fully and feel your emotions. I think sometimes when we're feeling a little emotionally unstable, we can stuff those feelings which does not stabilize us at all. 
give your emotions some respect, right? Feel them. Negative emotion are trying to, you know, protect you from something. Positive emotions are trying to drive you in a certain direction. Whatever it is, we need to feel it. We need to pay attention to it. We need to address it if we need to, and then move on and move out of that. Next is recheck our expectations. So expect the fact that things can go wrong for a million reasons. And I know that sounds a little bit crazy because we're a positive group and we think about all the million things that can go right. But an emotionally stable person can see both sides of the coin and say, you know what? I'm gonna, I could be disappointed. I could be upset. I could be, but this is how I'm going to deal with it. So the people that can see and know that life is gonna throw us some curveballs are going to be the strongest and most and more emotionally stable. And then next, recognize those triggers. I feel like such a millennial when I say the word trigger. I don't, and I'm not, we all know that, but it's true. Each and every one of us have things that trigger an emotional reaction within us. So if we can recognize them, it can help us be more prepared in those stressful situations and avoid the things that stress us unnecessarily. Next, find an activity that calms you. So coach was talking about a little bit of different things that he does that, you know, the way he starts his day and gets his dome right. And yes, I have a feeling it's very different than the way that I start my day and get my dome right. But it doesn't matter. Figure out the things that make you feel good. So Anne, it might be, you know, working in her soil. And Melinda, it might be cooking. And Marlene might be a knitter. I don't know. Hill's a jogger and he runs all over, you know, northern Alabama. I have no idea. But find the thing that helps ground you. You know, I, silly little thing I like to, I like to look at this pool out here. Like, I think that's why my landlord's probably never going to get me out of this house is because I love looking at this body of water. It's so peaceful. It grounds me. It helps me start my day. And then next, know when to ask for help. So emotionally stable people know that it's okay to sometimes to look outside yourself and find somebody else to help you. And with that, number eight is to surround yourself with good people. Like, I love this group. We are, if you look through the chat, like it is the most positive, uplifting, encouraging world to live in. Like I want to live in the Coach's Corner chat all day long, every single day, because these are incredible humans. Like we are all just such a beautiful, loving, caring group. So surround yourself with people like us, right? All of us and find a way to bring them into your life because that's going to help you be more emotionally stable. And then lastly, stop faking it. Right. If you're having a, a rough day, if you are feeling emotionally unstable, be authentic with it, acknowledge it, um, and then work your way through stabilizing it in the future. So, coach, you know, I needed this. Brent has heard me. Oh, he's he might be gone, but he has heard me cry over this dog like 47 times in the last <laughs> 24 hours. I only dropped her off yesterday morning. So um, appreciate you helping me try to be a little bit more stable, Brent. And um, yes, I have major separation anxiety, Anita. That's what we're dealing with. And love you guys. <laughs> Hope you have a great day. You are great. You're great. Yes, yes. We know you're struggling, but hey, Maddie's going to be so awesome. Uh, and all you on here, thank you. Thank you for jumping on. Thank you for being a part of that and a part of this every day. And Jane, we are praying for you. And Jane, Jane posted in the comments that it's been 12 days since her father passed, and she's using the coach's corner to kind of recalibrate. And uh, Jane, our, our, our prayers go out to you, and you're in our thoughts and prayers. So we love you. Um, we're, we're family here, right? Yeah, yeah. So appreciate you guys. Have a great Tuesday, and we'll see you back tomorrow. Thank you, Brian. Thank you, Andrew. God bless. Thank you. Have a great day. Love you. 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 Love you